Hi, my name is Leah Day, and welcome to Quilt Along number 8 on the Free Motion Quilting Project. Last week, we learned how to stitch a real quilt with a large scale stippling, and I showed you a lot of uh, video really close to my hands and a little further out so you could see some of the movements I was making of the quilt. But a lot of quilters requested seeing the whole quilt, seeing a new angle with my video camera so that you could see the whole quilt moving around the machine, how I was repositioning it, how I was taking it, uh, the quilting from the center to the outside edges. And so I've decided to basically shoot that video again, this time showing you a different quilt uh, but with a new angle so that way you can see how I move the quilt at any given time, how I reposition it, and how I really kind of bust the bulk of the quilt and how I deal with it even when I'm working in the very center of the quilt or when I'm working on the very edges. So I hope you enjoy this video. One thing I do want to note is that I have never seen myself quilting before so this has kind of been an eye-opening experience for me to actually see how my body looks uh, when I'm quilting and I noticed uh, in watching the video that my neck has been making a very awkward angle when I'm quilting especially when I kind of lean forward a little bit in order to see where I've stitched before. Uh, after I noticed this it was kind of a light bulb moment because the past year I've had a lot of problems with my neck a lot of headaches, a lot of migraines, and I have to say it's 100% caused by what I'm doing when I'm quilting, obviously. So I would say in this situation, do as I say, not as I do, and uh, try and get a chair that adjusts down a little lower so that way you don't have to make that angle with your neck. I know I'm definitely going to focus on that in my studio from here on out. Uh, and then also make sure you stop and stretch every once in a while. It's a good idea to stop and stretch uh, about every 15-20 minutes or so because making an awkward angle sometimes you can't really help it. Sometimes you have to kind of you know move your neck around or your head around in order to be able to see where you're going and the only thing you can do is just simply try not to maintain that position for too long and then try and stretch it out afterwards. So I hope that makes sense and I hope you enjoyed this video of seeing how the quilt moves on your sewing machine. So let's get started quilting this quilt and seeing how it works on the machine. And one thing I need to note as we get started is that I've had to speed up this video eight times uh, what the normal speed was. And that's just simply because I'm trying to show you all the steps of quilting it all in one video and I have a limitation of 15 minutes. So I can't show you everything but I try and show you as much as I can. So I have had to speed it up quite a bit and uh, I'm, it's actually quite a challenge to edit and narrate it because my video camera software doesn't seem to like it when I speed things up too much. So sometimes I might be a little delayed in uh, kind of narrating, explaining something that's happening, but I'll try and do my best. So what you're seeing right now is me work from the center of the quilt in a row. I'm stitching a row of the design from the center to uh, one edge. And the edge is, in, is always to the right. I always kind of work this row from the left to the right side of the quilt. Now I'm stitching down in the borders, being very careful of that edge of the quilt as I stitch down. And then I'm going to rotate the whole quilt and kind of rustle it up, kind of fold it and uh, roll it a bit to get it up off my lap because you see how the position that I have it in right now, almost all of the quilt is down towards my body and I don't want it falling off the edge of the table. I don't want it on my lap. I don't want it off the edge of that table. I want it up on the table surface on, a, on the same surface as my sewing machine. So that's why I do those folds and just like folding a quilt up uh, you know, when we fold our quilts just to store them, it makes them more compact and easy to move around. So by folding it up, it's going to slide and glide more easily because all of the weight is going to be pretty much in one place. And that's a lot easier than if it's all kind of stretched out. Like here, you know, things are kind of stretching out. That's okay, but you know, as soon as I push on it and I start feeling resistance, that's a problem. So I've stitched down and back into the center with another kind of four inch row and then now I've stitched from the center again to the right. So I'm hitting a second side of the quilt and kind of running along that border and the edge of the quilt 
trying to lock in that in place and being really careful not to stitch any pleats into the border area. It's kind of challenging. Now I'm going to fold it, roll it, rotate it again, and start stitching straight down again. And you can see how, you know, it really kind of depends on how what feels most comfortable for you. You know, you don't have to rotate your quilt this way. You could just completely uh, keep it the same place, stitch down in your border, and then stitch from right to left if that feels natural for you. For me, it feels much better to rotate the quilt and stitch straight down. I like that. I think it feels better. And then rolling ro and folding the quilt works for me as well. Although it does cause my left arm to have to kind of wing up and, and roll around that big hump of the quilt as I, you know, because it's really big. It takes up a lot of space. So I'm back in the center of the quilt and working another row to the right side. I just do this four times and this breaks the quilt up into four equal quadrants. And then the second step is just simply to fill each quadrant. And what's nice about this is I realized I managed to break the quilt up into four quadrants in about an hour and a half. And then each quadrant was filled in about 30 minutes. So it was really nice, you know, I was able to uh, kind of estimate my time with that and know how much time it was going to take. So, you know, you could break this project up over several nights, you could do a quadrant a day, you know, you could do the breaking down stitching, what I'm showing you right now, you could do that over the course of two or three days or over the course of an afternoon. You know, it's really nice that it kind of breaks it down into smaller segments, so you don't feel like you have to just sit down and stitch the whole quilt at once. That's just not logical. And, of course, it's not very good for your body. As you can see, I've hit that third side, I think. that's the, Yeah, that's the third side. And then I've rotated in and I'm stitching down again, back into that center area. And let's talk for a minute about trying to make this easier to move on your sewing machine. You can see how easily this kind of glides and slides over the surface of my machine. And one thing that I have is I have a Queen Supreme slider underneath the quilt. And that's taking up a big amount of space around the machine, uh, under the needle, and it's making things much easier to move around. And then I am also using slick tabletops. The tables are from Ikea, and they have a nice slick surface. And this is super important, because if you're using a table with a wood finish, uh, that wood finish, unless it's been lacquered uh, and it's real slick, that wood finish is going to grab a hold of your fabric, and it's going to be hanging on to it. And that's a real pain uh, because it's not going to it's not going to move and glide as smoothly as what you're seeing in this video, even if you do everything that I'm showing you, uh, because the finish is just simply locking on to those fibers. So it'd be a good idea to either switch tables or uh, try and cover the wood surface with contact paper, something that will make it slick and slippery. Now I'm stitching down with the last row headed back into the middle of the quilt. And one really cool thing you can do if you really pay attention and plan ahead is you can try and hit that original starting point uh, with your quilt. That's what I ended up doing. And then now I'm cut. It's the next evening. We've time warped and I am filling the quadrant of the quilt, one of the quadrants. And you can see how I've kind of rustled and, and rolled the quilt up around me and I've done that because I find that with the whole quilt stretched out on the table it really creates a lot of resistance and so I've rolled it up in this way so I can keep all the weight of the quilt kind of right there where I'm moving it so it's a lot easier to move and I'm just stitching rows in order to fill that quadrant up completely and finish off the quilt of course you want to be real careful of the border in this situation. You can see how I'm kind of moving and repositioning my hands in order to keep that uh, kind of in mind. I also continue to rotate the quilt. Rather than stitch from right to left, I just rotate it, roll the quilt up around me, and keep it off my lap, and then stitch back and forth from, basically this movement is left to right, then rotate and stitch straight down towards my body, and then I rotate again and stitch from left to right. And here you can see I'm working, I think I'm working back to the right again. And I'm almost into uh, that corner, really, that area where uh, the fabric is, is going to really be kind of crazy and difficult to see where I'm going. And that's another point is, you know, your border is that area right next to the, you know, edges of your quilt. To use a more floral 
uh, pattern for your border might be a good idea because it will hide a lot of mistakes and it will potentially hide pleats uh, because that crazy fabric will be a lot more camouflaging than plain fabric. So that might be another idea, another tip to take from this video. You can see that I'm rotated again and I'm stitching down towards myself again. Uh, just trying to interlock this row with the previous row as I showed in the video last week. And it's really just a matter of uh, just trying to take it back and forth and interlock the rows and kind of try and see where you're going and what you're doing. The last row, of course, is going to be basically right on the edge of the quilt, right on the border. And this is kind of nice. I like it when it ends up this way and I'm stitching from uh, left to right in this situation. Uh, that way I can really see where I'm going and maintain a good stitch and at the same time not stitch any pleats into the border area of the quilt. So that's it for this week. I really hope this video has helped you see how to move and position a rather large quilt on your sewing machine. Of course, you can stitch a lot bigger than this quilt. This quilt was somewhere around uh, 60 or 70 inches wide. I didn't measure it, uh, but it certainly felt just about the same size as the quilt that I made last week. So it's something to kind of keep in mind. You don't need a huge setup in order to quilt real quilts on your sewing machine. However, quilting it all in one piece is always going to be more challenging than quilting it in smaller sections. So I think this is something we kind of have to play with. We both have to learn how to quilt quilts in one section uh, and then also understand the limitations of our particular setup. If you don't have as much space, consider only quilting quilts that you can break down into smaller pieces. So I hope all that makes sense. Please link up your blog post and what you shared with finishing up UFOs last week, stitching them with large scale stippling. I really hope you've gotten in on your sewing machine and been able to blast through a project or two. So until next time, let's go quilt. Treat yourself to three tools that will make free motion quilting on your home sewing machine much easier. The Queen Supreme Slider, Machinegers Quilting Gloves, and Little Genie Magic Bobbin Washers. Find all three tools in the Queen Supreme Kit at DayStyleDesigns.com.